Hey, musical scientists! Merry Christmas season! I'm doing a Q&A because we just passed 60,000 subscribers. Woo! Uh, Michael from Patreon asks, do you normally first think of a topic or a song? I have way more songs than I ever do and way more topics than I ever do, but once in a while something will sort of cross-connect in my brain and flash through and there will be this moment of, oh, that, that could be used for that, and usually it's like a jumping off point. Anna Zankoff asks, would you consider doing some songs aimed at grade school science? This is something that I've actually gotten a few times. It's gonna have to wait a little while just because I can't produce that much content as like a one-person operation. I'm starting to outsource more of the functions of acapella science very slowly. For example, this vlog is going to be edited by Tom Zalatni. If any like grade school people, especially teachers, want to reach out to me and say like here's the kinds of things we would really want to see, I would I would love to know that. Tamar E. Ginden on Patreon says, I'm wondering what your musical background is both education and family wise. I started singing in a choir when I was three. My mom ran uh, this junior choir at our church, um, so I joined that when I was three and my dad plays the piano, just sits down and plays for an hour based out of just stuff he's coming up with. So I think music is very deep in our family. I, I picked up the piano when I was three or four. But I never really learned to read music. I still can't really read music. And I feel like I'd like to know more theory, so I've started making some baby steps into that. There's some cool YouTube, uh, YouTube channels on music theory. Theo Cooper asks, what did you study in grad school? I was looking at quantum gravity stuff, so if you go on the uh, Bohemian Gravity video, you can actually go and look at my thesis, which I had posted in a Google Doc there. But basically, we were looking at universes that only have two spatial dimensions, and also that were like wrapped up and compactified on themselves. So, a universe that's shaped like the outer surface of a pretzel, if you imagine like a hollow pretzel. We were looking at what happens if you apply quantum mechanics to those universes. Andrew Mitchell asks, Star Wars or Star Trek? Um, is there a safe way to answer this? I'm gonna go with Firefly. Liz Argall on Patreon asks, What do you do when you get stuck? What's the scariest creative decision you've made thus far? Um, when I get stuck, I usually move on to another project. Usually I have four or five going. I've found it very helpful when I'm super stuck to just go back and like read the Wikipedia page on any subject. The scariest creative decision I've made so far, I think, is just starting to do this as an actual job in the first place. Inace asks, what do you do with your non-YouTube time? Ever plan on visiting Europe? Inace runs a great YouTube channel called Draw Curiosity. Go check her out because she's an awesome YouTuber. What do I do with my non-YouTube time? Honestly, these days I mostly walk down the street 20 minutes and I visit my niece. But I'm gonna be taking a bit of a Christmas vacation. I'm going out to Ontario to see my mom's extended family and run around their farm and probably see a whole chunk of little cousins and things. Do I plan on visiting Europe? I don't know, I've never been to Europe. I would love to go to Europe. I have this long time dream actually to visit Pompeii and Herculaneum. I don't know, I've always found that a really fascinating nexus of like history and science. Olivia Flores asks, what is your favorite theorem or formula? I don't really get attached to formulas. I think I get attached to concepts. When you learn quantum mechanics, it already blows your mind that a particle can kind of be in many places at once and it kind of becomes this cloud of probabilities. When you take quantum field theory, it all reverses itself and they say, wait a minute, you got this backwards. The cloud of probabilities is a field and that's the real thing. And then what you call a particle is just when you happen to zero in with a really precise pinprick and poke it, you see something there and you call it a particle. But the real thing is the field and the field is spread out all over the place. And really what you call matter is the same as what you call energy. It's just all energy trapped in these fields and worrying around each other because they're attracted to each other in different ways. So I remember walking out of the physics building at McGill, staring at the building across from me and suddenly having this moment of realization that like the entire solid thing that I could see there was just this trapped energy in these various fields all like simultaneously interacting and whirling around each other in infinite complexity. And that was a real moment of zen, I think. Goglu asks, are you going to any conventions this year? Um, I went to Buffer Festival this year, Tom and I went. We hung out with Sabrina from Nerdy and Quirky, which is another great YouTube channel. She's become a bit of a friend. We just did a podcast with her. We're on the Effort Discussion podcast, so you can go listen to that if you want to. Eliza Bird Nerd asks, How hard is it maintaining a passion for music and finding time to practice while you're going for a rigorous science major? I've never really been a rigorous practicer. If you can use music as a counterpoint to actually keep you sane, I think you'll probably actually do better in both of those things than if you tried to single-handedly ram yourself at one single goal in life. Guten Tag Alex asks, How did you get the idea to do a science-themed acapella parody YouTube channel? Tom and I had been doing this other project called Cabin 9, taking the popular songs of the day and figuring out ways to do those as 
a cool duet. Um, but then acapella science sort of blew up and I realized I could do this as a career, so that's why I sort of jumped into this. I wanted to do something acapella. I'd been in an acapella group in Vancouver when I went out there for a summer to work at Triumph. I've always had this ability to hear a song and basically hear every note that's going all at once. I think acapella is a really cool medium for showing people that. What was my inspiration? It came from the Maccabees, actually. And I learned what Hanukkah was and what the story of the Maccabees was through listening to their song and watching their video. And so I had this thought of, wouldn't it be cool if I could do that for science? And I was already thinking that after grad school I was gonna take some time off and pursue music. So I jumped into this. And three and a half years later, I am still doing it. Nightchild314 asks, How do you maintain your creativity and keep motivated to do work? I think one thing that I really struggle with is that I, if I feel like I'm not inspired, I would rather stay in bed and wait for inspiration to hit me. There's this real temptation to just crawl back into bed and watch six seasons of Friends on Netflix, right? Having set this out as a job that now I have to keep making things in order to pay my rent and stuff is actually very useful for me because it forces me out of that space. Surprisingly often when I come out of that space and I sit down and I force myself to work, within 10 minutes I'm inspired by something. My general advice for you is just keep at it and force yourself to do it. H. Krauss asks, why are there only two tidal waves per day when there's only one moon to attract the ocean water? Oh, this is a fun one. The moon is not the dominant force on the water on the earth. The water over here, on this side of the planet, if the moon's over here, is feeling a pull strongly to the moon, so it bulges up a little this way. The water on this side is actually feeling the moon's pull a little less than the earth is. So the earth is getting pulled a little bit this way, and the water is not so much, so it actually bulges out this way. You've got water up here, water down here, forms kind of an egg shape, and then as the earth rotates around, you get a hump, and then six hours later a dip, and then six hours later a hump, and then six hours later a dip, and you get two tides per day. And this has been Science Facts with Tim. <laughs> Brendan James Raymond asks, what programs do you use for audio and video editing slash recording? For audio, I use Presonus Studio One version two. For video editing, I use uh, After Effects by Adobe and Adobe Premiere as well. Darwin Hannon would like to know how I feel about the current president-elect and his anti-science cabinet. I think science has to figure out how we can avoid these charges of elitism. The elites are just people who are actually experts in something, but when you get into a social situation where nobody trusts the elites, all of a sudden nobody trusts the people who actually are good at making decisions. So I think science popularization and like actually bringing the, the really important things in science down to a level where really like a five-year-old can understand it and becomes undeniable from an actual um, like rational standpoint as long as you absorb the information. I think that's a really important thing to do and I think that's the only thing that's sort of going to battle scientific ignorance whether it's like anti-vaccination stuff or anti-global warming stuff um, or creating or whatever it is. As for actually how this is gonna shape up, good luck, United States. Um, we'll all be pulling for you. CJ Stanbridge wants to know, who are your most notable influences and inspirations, both musical and scientific? My first inspiration, Bill Nye the Science Guy, got to me when I was three years old. My supervisor, Alex Maloney, who I did my master's thesis with, Sean Carroll, Derek Muller from Veritasium, Henry Reich, Vihart, and other YouTubers. I grew up on a lot of classical music, Bach and Vivaldi, and going to church and learning all sorts of church hymns and stuff like that. I got really into punk and metal in my high school days. My greatest influence when I write music is this guy named Devin Townsend, who's a metal slash everything else guy from out on the west coast. Ilum Eltanen wants to know, what is your normal vocal part, say, in a choir? How did you expand your range to sing all the parts in your videos? I'm told by an opera singer I used to live with that if I actually trained my voice, I would be a tenor. As it is, I sit very much in the baritone kind of range. When I go down, Really what I'm doing is I'm going really close to the microphone um, and then going way down here so you can see if I come all the way up like this it sounds really deep. And then I've just tr sort of trained my falsetto for the high stuff. Brandy Perney on Facebook asks, My son, age 11, wants to ask you if his theory of what caused the Big Bang is plausible. The Higgs field was always here and the thing that caused the vacuum decay to happen happened at such a large scale that it caused the Big Bang. But instead of destroying matter, it created matter. Brandy, has your son ever heard of flow rolling? inflation because look that up he might actually be right. I'm gonna skip that one because it's about my PhD. I'm not doing a PhD. Sabrina Hurst asks, are you single? 
Lamusa Chamusa Camusa says, I just wanted to say thank you for the awesome videos you make. Not a question, but I really appreciate that. If there's particular things that you really like in these videos that I'm making, I would really appreciate it if you actually tell me what it was in the video that really affected you. That would actually be really helpful for me, because then I could take that and do more of that. All right, well, that's all the questions we have time for today. Thank you to everybody who sent them in, especially those of you who are on Patreon who are supporting this. Thank you for your interest. Thank you to everybody who's subscribed. You 60,000 people, I can't believe that I get to bring this message of whatever it is that I'm trying to do to all of you and you're all actually interested. It's still kind of insane. So, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, whatever you're doing, keep sciencing, stay safe, enjoy your families, and try to be a little more loving to each other. Until next time, I'm Tim Blaine. You're watching Acapella Science. Bye. I'm do the Morgan Page thing where I cover the lens. Acapella Science.